أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We are still in the باب of المجاهدة and um, the one hadith or one hadith that actually we'll be talking about or we actually will be starting with uh, it's a hadith very important for us for we are actually for those who are following uh, the Hijri calendar, uh, you know, we are in Rajab. And the Prophet ﷺ used to make a dua, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. And this is actually part of the act of mujahada. And the Prophet ﷺ, as we know, and, and this is very important for us because a lot of times, especially with Ramadan, and, and actually, we're going to go to the hadith. Uh, this is not the hadith, by the way. Uh, the hadith that actually we're going to talk about will come to later. But look at the mindset that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has uh, even before Ramadan comes. And one of the biggest struggles that actually a number of people have with Ramadan is they wait until Ramadan comes, and that's when they start trying to get ready for Ramadan, uh, whether it's uh, spiritually or mentally in a sense, to prepare themselves for the Qiyam, to prepare themselves uh, for obviously the increase in Ibadat and so on and so forth. So Ramadan comes and they find themselves the first few days trying to, um, for some, unfortunately, even trying to work on their uh, mandatory acts of worship, specifically and more specifically the Salah. So it doesn't work for them. Ramadan comes and by the time Ramadan is leaving, they haven't figured out what they were really trying to get out of Ramadan. But look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and actually we are told that the companions, the attitude they had with Ramadan, the entire year was revolving around Ramadan. So the six months leading to Ramadan, they're spiritually and mentally thinking about Ramadan. Obviously they continue to worship Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala throughout the year, but in a sense, they're eager and waiting for Ramadan, so they prepare themselves. They want to make sure that they're consistent in the extra prayers and the extra fasts and whatever that they're actually trying to add in addition to the fara'id. Because those are not things that we even should be talking about as something that, you know, we have to kind of like, you know, work on. They, they should be already established. And they pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on that path of establishing uh, the, the fara'id and wajibat. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the opportunity uh, to be able to put the extra effort for the Sunan and the Nawafil. So what they used to do is the six months leading to Ramadan, you know, they'll be in that uh, mindset of uh, anticipating Ramadan to come. And, the, and, and, you know, about the five months after Ramadan, they find themselves in, in a state of muhasaba. What did I do in Ramadan? that I should have improved on. Um, you know, how was my intention? How was my niyyah? Uh, what was I doing in Ramadan that I want to keep and, 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 you know, maintain and retain throughout, you know, this time? So subhanAllah, they didn't find themselves 100% leaving Ramadan in a sense that they're not feeling the spirituality of Ramadan. So when Ramadan comes to them, they find themselves, alhamdulillah, by the decree and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ready they have the energy they have the uh, enthusiasm to actually observe ramadan the way that it should be observed so obviously part of that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like we said uh, he says allahum barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna ramadan al baraka here it's in the a'mal because any other time if you look at it including ramadan it's just a time it's the the seconds minutes hours days and months and years. But where is the barakah? The barakah that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about that the time is actually being utilized in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For we all get to live throughout all of these days and weeks and months. But the Prophet ﷺ, what he's teaching us is we are seeking the blessings and barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the two months leading to Ramadan. And the ultimate prize is actually Ramadan itself. And Aisha radiallahu anha uh, narrates in one of the hadith, she said, I've never seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fast the extra fasting. We're not talking about Ramadan. Obviously Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to fast the entire month. No question about that, no doubt. But we're talking about the extra 
Siyam, she said, it's the month before Ramadan. It's the month of Sha'ban, in which the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi almost did not break his fast. Uh, of course, he did break his fast, um, you know, um, throughout Sha'ban because he's trying to teach us that Sha'ban is not uh, Ramadan. But she said, you know, and subhanAllah, this is in Mujahada. A lot of people, we have these ideas of, I want to do this, I want to do that. Uh, and it stops as an idea. It, it actually, it dies as an idea or as a dream. But subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us that if you want to achieve something, um, put your sight on that thing, but also be aware of the steps that actually you need to have and put in place that will lead you there, right? If you want to carry, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, something heavy, you have to gradually start getting yourself um, you know, gradually lifting something lighter and then something heavier and heavier and heavier until you get to the ultimate goal. So obviously this is also with Islam and, and especially the spirituality, uh, you know, that we have in Islam. So the now we come to the hadith that I want to talk about. And this is hadith an Aisha radiyallahu anha and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, can... كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر أحيا الليلة وأيقظ أهله وجد وشد المئزر. And obviously here, إذا دخل العشر العشر الأواخر من شهر رمضان. So remember, the Prophet ﷺ, before he used to fast, he used to pray, and of course, obviously throughout Ramadan, but even more uh, during the last uh, 10 nights of um, Ramadan and obviously and clearly we know that Layla Al-Qadr uh, does fall in the last 10 days of um, Ramadan. So she said when when that happens, uh, he would actually, um, you know, shadd uh, al-mi'zar and, and uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, obviously it's, it's kinaya that he he, fulfill, he isolates himself in a sense that now I'm 100% dedicating myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 100% separating myself from all the worldly attachments and dedicated fully everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, it is in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, you know, life is about, you know, three thirds. A third for ourselves, a third for our families and, and the obligations that we have towards them and the people around us and of course a third to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but obviously the first two are also to Allah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's keep that in mind so when Ramadan comes and especially the last 10 nights the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he puts himself in a state of i'tikaf and the i'tikaf he puts himself he isolates himself from people less talking unless he really really has to talk obviously like we mentioned he isolates himself from people and it's time for him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is mujahada, this is an ishtihad to, uh, you know, bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is something that we ought to learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that in mujahada that he actually, he practiced, and it's very crucial actually, uh, this is something that, um, you know, inshallah we'll be covering when we start reading from the book of Tizkiyat Tis al-Anfus, uh, the purification of um, al-Nafs. Siyam is actually one of the tools to purify our Anfus. And one of the things that actually Siyam does to us, and again, this is part of Mujahada because Tizkiyat al-Anfus, the purification of the souls or, or our individual soul, it's a struggle. It's not something that it's uh, given to us. Otherwise, all of us would have, you know, alhamdulillah, will attain that level of tazkiyat and nafs. And it's an ongoing struggle. No one can claim that that's it. I have cleansed myself. I'm fully dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, because life and, and obviously shaitan and trials and, uh, you know, uh, tribulations and, and deception, all that, it's something that we have to continue to struggle with. But Ramadan, it's one of the forms of ishtihad that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us that what he does is, he detached himself and he deprived his body and even his nafs from things that are halal, are actually halal uh, in the night of Ramadan, are halal 
you know, uh, to us generally speaking, uh, but even in the nights of Ramadan. But what he does, he actually uh, deprives the nafs of the low desires of the the um, the earthly desires, let's call them. And of course, obviously the body for its own desires and gives it minimum um, sustenance to keep the body going because now it's all about the uplifting of the soul, right? And he shows us that, like I said, throughout Ramadan, but even more, um, you know, um, and, and, and more even and, and uh, more specific, and especially in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So Ramadan is coming. I do pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to make the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to witness um, Ramadan, the shahr of the Quran. So that's something that I really pray that as we continue with the mujahada, we have to remember that Ramadan is, is one of the biggest stations of um, mujahada. And like I mentioned, inshallah, when we get to, uh, if we are among the living and we get to actually cover uh, the book of Tazkiyat uh, al-Anfus, uh, inshallah, we'll talk uh, a little bit more details about that. There is um, another uh, hadith that, uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi is, is teaching us now about um, ourselves and how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala sees us. And this is a uh, hadith that is narrated by uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Um, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير احرص احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجز وإن أصابك شيء فلا تقل لو أني فعلت كان كذا وكذا ولكن قل قدر الله وما شاء فعل فإن لو تفتح عمل الشيطان In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم compares two believers and there is uh, a great lesson for us to actually learn from this. It says, المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. So let me actually go to the last part before we go to the first one. In, in the last part of this portion of the hadith, because obviously there is a continuation to the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu says, there is goodness, there is khair in all believers. All believers, because he divided us into two groups, the strong believers and the weak believers. So there is khair in all. So, so we want to start with, with that mindset that there is khair in all of us, but there is a comparison here uh, in which the Prophet ﷺ states clearly. He says, the believer who is strong, strong in iman, strong in their dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen, uh, in, in which even we are told, Akramukum indallahi atqakum, the most honorable ones amongst us are the ones with the highest level of taqwa. Uh, and, and taqwa is being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned this is, is making sure that you're doing uh, what that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being in places that are actually pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from action or even uh, being in places that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. So that's the state of taqwa. So the strong believer here, and actually some scholars, they say, the strong, even in the built, in the body, who is using their body to benefit the ummah, that actually is included in this, right? But here they're talking about the quwa of the iman, the, the quwa of the love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the believers, uh, the quwa or the strength in, in dedicating ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the ultimate, ultimate strength because anything else, if it's not dedicated towards <coughs> the, the existence that we are here for, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no khair in it then actually that becomes something that might be even more harmful than beneficial to us. But anything that we have, and the quwa here also includes the wealth. It includes pretty much knowledge. And everything that adds value to us as believers who are living, dedicating our lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it adds strength to us, right? And you take it and you scale to anything that you're using, um, again, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
then that becomes uh, an addition to your quwa. And the Prophet ﷺ says, that person is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to really hear uh, for people to understand, because uh, including Arabs, by the way, when they hear this hadith, they think it's the built, it's, it's the, the, you know, the physique, the physical uh, appearance of the individual. And like I mentioned, that is, that is included if it's done right. But I want to talk about something that really clarifies to us what this hadith is saying. And it takes us to ishtihad. Because remember, this hadith is in the, is, is in Bab al-ishtihad. It's in the, under the chapter of ishtihad. And ishtihad is ishtihad al-nafs. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, anyone who actually reads the seerah of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, you cannot miss the fact that he was very skinny. He was, he was very skinny, radiyallahu anhu. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one hadith, he said about Abu Bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu, if the iman of Abu Bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu was put on one side of the scale, and then the iman of the entire ummah was to be put on the other, la rajahat kaffat Abu Bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu. The iman of Abu Bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu would outscale our Iman all together with all the strength that we have in whatever form that it has. When we do that, the Iman of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, is much, much heavier in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously we know the most beloved person to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, number one was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, in a narration um, you know, as a person who has, you know, emotions just like all of us, it was Aisha radiallahu anha, but among men, it was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anha. But the point here is to actually um, explain and elaborate a little bit, uh, you know, when it comes to this hadith that actually we're talking about. So it's how we live our lives, how much of the dedication that we have towards, you know, our deen. You know, the surrender and submission that we have, that decides how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. That decides um, how good are we in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that's, that should be the scale that we have or the measurement that we should have to measure our position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much effort I'm putting um, to become closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we did mention the hadith the closer we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the much, much, much closer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be, um, you know, to us. So, the, the, so that's the first part uh, of the hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'ak. Subhanallah, al-hirs here is, 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 there's emphasis on this. Make sure that you focus, make sure that you invest in that which benefits you. Benefits you in the hereafter. This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clearly, he is talking about that which benefits us in the hereafter. For the dunya is an investment that we have to invest. And inshallah, the return investment should be in the akhirah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking to us, is increase your iman. Because once we increase our iman, and if we do it with honesty and sincerity, with that intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will automatically, inshallah, find ourselves doing even more and more uh, of things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we continue to struggle with certain things. And we say, and he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ And subhanallah, in Surah Al-Fatiha, and this is something that actually I've mentioned before, we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ So al-ibadah here, it's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about because anything we do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes an act of worship. So what he's saying is focus on that. Invest in that. Make sure that that's your main focus in life. You wake up and you go to sleep with that focus of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wasta'in billah. Never think that it's your own doing. Never think that it's all about what I actually am capable of doing or I did this because I was capable or was able of doing it. Always say it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for me. Therefore, I have to make sure that I am grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And make sure that we always ask for hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we continue to do our best based on the knowledge that we continue to acquire to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For we could have all the knowledge, we could have all the power, all of these things that would you know, make us stronger, quote unquote, compared to others. But wallahi, if we do not have the hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that knowledge, those assets that we have, they become more of harmful things to us than they are beneficial. So always, always, always remember that we are helpless without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are helpless without the help and the assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not something to be said to sound good. Wallahi, this is the truth. Wallahi, this is the truth. No one is capable of doing what we are capable of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow for us. That's why always check your heart. That ishtihad, it should start mujahada to nafs. It starts with the ishtihad and mujahada um, with our soul. Make sure that we purify our hearts. Make sure that we always keep our intention in check. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi will facilitate a lot of things. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala ta'jaz. You know, subhanallah, you know, they say the only disabled person is the one who is capable but chooses not to. So subhanallah, meaning the Prophet is saying, don't create obstacles in front of yourself. Don't just create them out of thin air. Don't um, also disappoint yourself. If you try something, don't give up. Don't say, I tried that and it didn't work. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards based on intention. So whatever you do, make sure that your intention is purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave the, resource, the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The results on the surface may not be pleasing to you. But if you have the pure intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Secondly, the results might not be an instant victory or an instant, you know, triumph for us, something to celebrate. Nuh alayhi salam, if he was to assess his success, 950 years of da'wah and the number of people that followed him, very, very small. But we are the offsprings of the people who followed Nuh alayhi salam. So think about you know, the effort that he put, his own son did not believe in him. His own wife did not believe in him. So to us, that's a failure. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be a prophet, but quote unquote, yet he failed to even convince his own son and his own wife. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that, from that ark, the people who followed Nuh alayhi salam, we came as the offsprings to continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet says, La ta'jaz. Ista'in billah wa la ta'jaz. And one of the ways of ajaz, one of the ways of ajaz, when asabaka shay'un fala taqul, law anni fa'altu kana kada wa kada. And we'll say what he's telling us to say, but he's telling us not to say this. And this happens to a lot of us something doesn't work the way that we want or something happens to us that is displeasing to us at least at that moment because sometimes subhanallah through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us you know in the future of you know in, in you know after the events took place we see and we say subhanallah we are happy that things happened that way even though we were not happy when they happened but Allah shows you that you know the fact that you know, they happened the way that we did not want for them uh, to happen or, or they didn't happen the way that we wanted to happen. And you come sometimes months, sometimes years later and you look and say, SubhanAllah, if you went my way, I would not be here in this blessed time, in this blessed moment, in this, you know, this blessed gathering, in, in this blessed situation that I'm finding myself in. SubhanAllah, that's Alhamdulillah, but sometimes you don't even see the wisdom. But the point is, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, that's one of the ways of having ajz and also losing iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you start questioning al-qada al-qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your enthusiasm to be the better version of yourself just dies out. So he's saying, don't. If something, if something happens to you that is displeasing according to your own measurement, don't say only if this or only if I did that or only if I said that or only if that person or only if Allah. Don't use if. Right? And he actually tells us, 
ولكن يقول قدر الله وما شاء فعل فإن لو تفتح عمل الشيطان يسأل سي قدر الله ما شاء فعل الله سبحانه وتعالى decrees and decides what happens and سبحان الله there is خير in that you have to convince yourself that in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is always khayr because when you start opening the door for if what if and, and if that then it actually it opens you know the door sh- to shaitan shaitan finds a way to to slip and seep into your iman into your heart and you start questioning things um, and, and, and sadness befalls you and anxiety and depression all these negative feelings and you become a weaker and weaker version of yourself. And until we realize that, that it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, don't, don't say if, focus on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. When there is khair, when something good is happening to us, something that we like, continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When something that befalls upon us, something that might be a little bit displeasing, Continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have patience because patience is actually an act of worship. Patience is one of the highest levels of worship when it comes to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what we're doing is we are saying, Ya Allah, we are patient, believing strongly that whatever you have decreed, there is khair in it. And I'm not questioning your qada. Because again, al-iman bil qada wal qadr, it's actually one of the things that we have to believe in. In addition to believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, prophets, books, uh, the day of judgments as well. So this is this is something, and, and I'm intending to actually conclude with this hadith because actually the next hadith, uh, it's something that we need to actually dedicate uh, a, a different session for, and and you know what uh, you know what comes um, after it. Um, but let's inshallah make sure that we are focusing, as I mentioned, obviously we started with Ramadan and, and we are, we continued with, you know, uh, the strong believer. Inshallah, let's use Rajab and Sha'ban to strengthen our Iman. If you can fast, fast as much as you can. Obviously we have Monday and Thursday, we have Al-Ayyam Mubil. <coughs> but try to increase, inshallah. We are in the winter. Um, you know, these are the short months uh, when it comes to the day and uh, long nights when it comes to the night. So let's inshallah practice. Let's get ourselves in that habit of trying as much as we can to fast and as much as we can uh, to to perform Qiyam al-Layl. And uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless these two months, Rajab and Shaban. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us among the ones who will witness the month of Ramadan this year. And most importantly, that he forgives our sins and that he accepts the fasting of, of, of this month, inshallah, from us. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us among the utaqa, um, his utaqa in this month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen among the months of the year. And let us also make dua for those who passed away, those who... Um, would not be with us in this month. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals those who are going through um, health uh, difficulties. And um, my personal request for anyone who's um, following is to pray for our uh, Imam Ahmed's wife. She um, having, um, after an accident, she's, she's, she's still going through surgeries. Uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give her, gives her full shifa. I mean, and jazakum Allah khair. Anything good that I said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Him. And anything wrong I might have said is from myself and shaitan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.